So, Lacey, uh, we talked about it on the Resistance broadcast, our Star Wars podcast, but you and I actually hung out for the first time in uh, like 15 months. Recently. You're so welcome. Uh, I was going to say you're welcome. You're, it's no, interesting that you're doing it. You're welcome. welcome. Hmm. Okay. All right. It was my idea to hang out, though, right? It was yours. You did. Uh... So. You know, proactively my... asked me to go see the movie yes that's my love language is you know asking people to hang stop out. stealing my phrases <laughs> <laughs> you're like i bought you this thing because <laughs> which I got was John very nice by the way thank you so with some help of people from our community i was able to get john the exclusive this year from Mattel, which was the Hot Wheels Batmobile cars of all the different Batman. And I know that John loves Batman, so I wanted to surprise surprise him. And there's one thing that I love to do for my friends is buy them stuff that they don't need that I think is like, hey, I know you like this thing. I'm going to get it right. for you. Um, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I got it for him. And I did. Nice. Like, you didn't have to get it for me. Why do you do that? And I was like, because gift giving is my love language, and it is. I, I I genuinely love giving gifts to people. Well, yeah, thank you very much. I yeah. appreciate it. Um, I look forward to uh, putting them somewhere around here for sure. Mm -hmm. Or you got my. I Where's saw it? the box. I got a picture of the box that's being shipped to me, and it is a pretty big box. Is it? All right. Yes. All right. I will find room for it somewhere nice. Thank you very much. Can't um, wait to I... see how you don't top that. <laughs> oh, I'll top it easily. <laughs> easily. No, but it is a really, really awesome gift because I do love the Batmobile and I obviously have my favorite, which is the 1989 Michael Keaton one. Yeah. But... I did it to celebrate our new podcast. It's like, yeah, we did it. Yeah. And I'm wearing my Batman shirt today mm -hmm. as a thank you to show you that uh, right. Batman is in our hearts. I we thought... are going to talk. We're going to talk. So... We're doing a lot of uh we're doing a lot of comic book superhero stuff today on the show so uh before yes. that though obviously you and i we hung out we saw deadpool and wolverine uh our full uh spoiler review of that is uh on our recent episode and we also did a separate video and podcast on uh, our reactions to san diego comic-con so check those out uh but thank you to everybody who's listening however you found nerdy and nice we appreciate it make sure you subscribe on your favorite podcast app apple spotify uh, of course the TRB YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash at TRB podcast. And if you like Star Wars, of course, the Resistance broadcast is our other podcast uh, weekly where we just talk strictly about Star Wars over there with some tangents, obviously, along the way. Mm -hmm. uh, but Lacey, uh, Squid Game, Lee Jung Jae is back and not only back one time, he's back two times because we have a season two debuting the day after Christmas. So goodbye, Christmas blues. You go from Christmas to everybody getting murdered for money. The it is the day, best gift Netflix could have given me this year. It's wonderful. And it's that lull right between the holidays. So you, they, they know everyone's going to be home and they're going to yes, watch it. It's so perfect. smart. Oh, uh, and can't the wait. final season debuting 20, uh, 2025. I don't know. They didn't say when. Uh, but what did you think of that little teaser? And uh, I know you're a Squid Game fan. So uh, excited. Squid Game is one of the best shows I've ever seen in my life. I will put wow. it up there as one of the wow. best TV shows I've ever watched. The experience of watching it was amazing. Uh, off air, we were just talking about how I was like, I want to do this for Halloween. Um, and I remember one time a friend had told me, like, Lacey, you're always the cool thing for Halloween, like two years late. Uh, and that is probably <laughs> accurate. Mm. Um, but I really want to be someone from Squid Game this year. But since it's coming back, I feel like it's like, okay. Um, so, but at the same time, I think I'm going to be Miss Rachel for Halloween this year. Oh, really? Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Put it in, put it in, put it in. <laughs> She's not, that's her, right? Yeah, that's a weird phrase to use when talking about oh, me being well, Miss Rachel. <laughs> well, that's her phrase, isn't it? That's her thing. Yeah, and I think Matt's going to go as a uh, blippy. Oh, uh, perfect. There so he's go. gonna be blippy. I'm gonna be Miss Rachel. That's what we're trying to think we're gonna do. Are you going to? Do you go to Halloween parties, you guys? We don't, but they do this big kind of trick or treat event in our town where they like the whole mm. town like shuts down and they do mm. trick or treat street. And we've done it for the past two years mm. uh, with cool. Daisy. And uh, last year, Matt's family came and we did a whole like day of it. We went out to lunch. It was like this big thing, but it's packed and it's a great time mm. and. Um, 
the funny thing is, and I don't know if you experience this because you don't live on a street like I do where like people come here specifically on Halloween because it's mm-hmm. like a good walk street. Um, we didn't get as many kids last year. And the rumor is because a lot of towns now do all these trunk or treat things yeah. at the schools. Mm-hmm. So by the time Halloween rolls around, everyone's like, our kids don't need more candy. They have enough right. candy. So then you have idiots like me that go to the store that are like, we've gotten so many kids in the past and we didn't get it. I had bags and bags of candy left over this year because all these kids do all these events like trick or treat street, trunk or treat. So you eat it. No, I gave it all away. What's your favorite candy? Probably Reese's. I feel like that's an easy answer. Reese's or Kit Kats. I love Kit Kats. Or uh, peanut butter cups. Cups. Little guys or the flat? What? What is happening right now? Well, why are we why are we guess whoing <laughs> which Reese's I like? I'm gonna buy you Reese's for Christmas. That'll be the trade off. Please no candy. I don't want any candy. Please no candy. Right. Please no candy. No candy. I'll get, I'll, you know that uh, what's that show? Is it cake? It'll look <laughs> like Reese's, but it'll really no. be like no. no sweet things. No. All right. I, no. All right. Whatever. I'm just making conversation about candy. Listen. I feel uh, like you were kind of trying to take notes of like, oh, let me get her something. I'm telling no. you, please don't buy me sweets. Oh, no. Uh, anyway, about Squid Game, yep. I'm so hyped about this. Like I said, best <clears> gift they could have <throat> given me. And I loved the way they did this trailer. Like if there's a streaming service slash studio, because they're kind of a studio now, like Netflix, that's kind of got their, you know, the pulse of what's cool or what people are talking about, what's going on. Like they're very on top of memes and uh, what shows are doing well online, what uh, scenes are trending with fans, what things that are just trending in general, whether it be Reddit or Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or TikTok. Um, So they put out a teaser that looks like the Olympics. It opens up with a running race with people putting their hands in the starting box on a track uh, which was obviously during the Olympics, so it made sense. And then it opens up, and it's the Squid Game music, like the ding dong, ding dong. And then they take off down the track, and one by one, people are dying. So yeah. I thought it was super clever. Um, and I am so hyped for this show. I can't wait to see where they take it. I have to go back and rewatch this. I'm gonna have to do a rewatch because, first of all, I want to, but second of all, I want to make sure I, uh, don't forget anything because you know a lot of these shows now which we've said in the past they take so long to come out with the next season that you forget what happened in the previous season yeah it's a pretty streamlined show though i mean it is but there's so there's nuances of like yeah different moments with different characters who did what um that i want to make sure i don't miss anything so is song um lee jung jay's character is he like is he becoming one of the like game enforcers now because he like won or whatever no i think my understanding is i believe he's going back into the game oh to take it down from the inside or something like that was my understanding and he like dyed his hair like bright red or something pink did i i am trying to remember how it ended like he won. I mean, yeah, Spoiler. we're talking spoilers for a Squid Game, which came out <laughs> three years ago. Yeah. He won, but the old man was actually like the orchestrator. He wanted was? to. He was dying, and he wanted to know what it felt like to be in the game that he liked so much. The old man. Yeah. Yeah, but the old man was. He, there was something about. He was a schemer. He was like a really like rich or something. He was he, one of the people in the room with the masks that would watch the game. Like you know how there was the Texas guy. Oh, the old man was. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Okay. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. He was one of those guys, and then said, "I want to be in it." Mm-hmm. So that's why when you see him die, he doesn't necessarily die. He's in like the sand marble area. So when mm. Lee Jung Jae's character is walking away, you assume he dies because you hear the gunshot, but you don't see him die because he doesn't die. Hmm. And that's when kind of Lee Jung Jae realizes like something about himself and about the situation he went through and how it's so terrible and like how he's going to bring it down. But I like that they're doing a trilogy. 
It is interesting. I'm very excited for it, for sure. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, for Lee Jung Jae, we just saw him in Acolyte and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, <laughs> I just want to see him uh, flourish. So mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to that. Um, speaking of going back to the candy thing, you had sent me something very old school feeling about Beetlejuice and how they're handling their marketing real quick. Yes. So they're doing a bunch of food tie ins and not just like, hey, they're on the packaging. They're doing a green Fanta, like like toxic green Fanta soda. And then they're also doing Keebler Elf, like fudge shop cookies that are white That's and right. black. Yeah. And um, I don't know if the Fanta has been seen in the, out in the wild yet, but someone found the cookies at a Walmart. So they're nice. out there and we got to get some and try them. Oh, yeah, I agree. Absolutely. Yeah. It reminds uh, me of the Ghostbusters, like the high C, green high C's. Yeah. With the Fanta. Would you are you are you like where are you at with Beetlejuice though? Like I know we talked about it. Like, I'm excited. I, yeah, I yeah, I feel like uh all right. You're excited, so maybe we maybe we go see that. Maybe we go yeah, see we said we were gonna see it. We said Did we were we? gonna see Twisters, Deadpool, and Beetlejuice. Well, Twisters didn't work out, but I still want to see Twisters, even though I've been spoiled. I still want to see Twisters. Who keeps spoiling you? What is this? Well, everybody and their mom has been posting online about how they don't kiss at the end of the movie. <laughs> and so that spoils Every it for me because then you're like going everybody in. Everybody is so horny. Like, what is it going? I, I, feel like... <laughs> I don't even think it's that. I mean, maybe it's that. But I think for me, at least, you can't build a, up a relationship with the two main leads of an adventure disaster movie and then not have them kiss at the end of the movie. And the actors claimed in the press conference, uh, press tour that they were like well spielberg didn't like it so he wrote it out which he also famously wrote out a kiss between alan and um what's her name the other doctor in mm. jurassic park he wrote out their kiss of the movie he said it was too much alan and ellie yeah ellie i i just don't know why we've turned into <laughs> we turned into a place that like people can't kiss it just seems like that when you're facing death like a tornado that if you have feelings for someone, you would learn, hey, life is short. Let me tell them how I feel. Um, and they did film a kiss for Twisters. Yeah. So that's the thing. Like Walmart or Walmart, Jesus, mall rats. Mm -hmm. uh, Jason Lee's character was telling the story about how this guy was on a plane and was going down. So mm -hmm. he had only one thing that he felt like he should do in that moment. I've never seen that movie, so I have no idea what oh. you're about to say. Is it something inappropriate? Yes. Uh, all right. <laughs> Let's move on to the main topics because it's time to get into superheroes in our first segment of the day called What's Happening, Lacey? Human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. Enough, I get the point. So I'm very surprised that Superman has already wrapped James Gunn his first movie with DC Studios, as they're calling it. Um, yeah, it's it's wrapping a year ahead of its release mm -hmm. with David Cornsweat. I got to get used to that name. Uh, celebrating with a giant brownie, which I don't blame him because he probably couldn't eat sweets for like months. <laughs> Speaking of sweets. Um, and then James Gunn definitely shares a wonderful message. So the, the video is very funny. I saw it making its rounds around social media of him taking this big bite. He says nothing. He just says happy wrap day. And what, what better way to celebrate than I can eat carbs now. Uh, I, know. <laughs> I can eat chocolate now. Um, but me on a let Friday me tell you, after trying to eat healthy for one week. Right. Uh, David did his work though. Cause he does look great in the suit. And, uh, I have to applaud people for having the willpower to like get into like super crazy shape. Yeah. Um, but I think he understands that this is a role of a lifetime, so he's going to do it the right way. But I love cute videos like this. Like it's so small, subtle, wonderful, and a great way to celebrate the journey that you've taken to, uh, become this character. But I know you wanted to read James Gunn's message, oh, yeah. which by the way, James has been killing it uh with mm -hmm. per usual the sentimental stuff uh yes. and just going through the process and being transparent with fans so this is no different yeah i mean you think about you know the heart of all those guardians of the galaxy movies and to bring that feel to superman is gonna be great especially with this quote here from him um but before yeah i can't i can't not say this you had mentioned david cornsweat looks good in this. 
um being as i recently revealed i was the ab double for hugh jackman in deadpool and Wolverine. <laughs> so it is a lot of work not just for the lead like you need to be on point i needed to be oiled the right amount it's, so it's were you also the abs in stepbrother when they cut to adam scott and they cut to his abs was that also you in stepbrothers no that was uh my dad that was my dad oh. <laughs> yeah uh all right <laughs> shut up john so <laughs> James Gunn said he tweeted, and this was yesterday. He said, and that's a wrap. And this is the, he uh, posted a photo from their first week of filming in Norway. And he wrote, and that's a wrap. God bless our cast and crew whose commitment, creativity, and hard work have brought this project to life. I set out to make a movie about a good man in a world that isn't always so much. And the goodness and kindness and love I've encountered on a daily basis on this set has inspired me and thrust me forward when I felt too spent to move on my own. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart. It has been an honor. The destination has been Superman, but the journey has been the toil and the laughter and the emotions and ideas and magic we've shared together on set. And for that, I'm forever grateful. <sighs> well, well, well done. And that makes me, that even, is beautifully I got, said. I got a little yeah. goose bumpy there. I got a little goose bumpy there. Like mm -hmm. you see, you see some of the cast there, um, and you see David Cornsweet, whose life's probably about to change, hopefully. Um, but it's, I don't it's, think he even knows. He doesn't realize how big it's about to change. And I hope it's, but I hope it is in the way where he loves playing Superman. It doesn't become one of those things where he hates Jaded. being Superman. You know what I'm saying? So we're yeah. in the good part. We're in the part where, you know, <laughs> Oscar Isaac was pumped about being in Star Wars. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it, this all just feels really good. I'm like the, the Guardians movies are my favorite. Uh, of the marvel movies um and i just i i just i can't i love i've always loved superman i grew up watching christopher reeve uh you know i've always loved superman the the doomsday comics all that stuff like i i love man of steel and i see people saying like oh they're trying to like push up back against on this because man of steel exists and it's just like i I'm going to like whatever Superman I want to like. And this is our new Superman. So I'm going to root for this guy. And James Gunn seems to be uh, leading a great ship. So it's very cool. Yeah. He's not just leading the ship for Superman. It seems like he's genuinely leading the ship for everything, which he yeah. should as the CEO, because yep. off the heels of everything we discussed, by the way, if you haven't seen it, go head over to YouTube or our audio channels. Um, we did put up a whole <laughs> a uh, kind of mini episode, a bonus episode, just breaking down San Diego Comic-Con and most importantly, all the Marvel stuff that came out of that. Um, he, James Gunn did make a statement about the DCU versus the, versus the MCO because naturally as fans, we always compare the two. You, you have your biggest superheroes on two sides. It's like, oh, I love Superman and Batman, but I also love Spider-Man and Iron Man and mm -hmm. Captain America and all this other stuff. And if you look at the history of the two studios, clearly Marvel has kind of toppled them a bit. They, they've led the way of storytelling and um, creating this overarching cinematic universe, which James Gunn played a huge role in, which mm -hmm. now he's on the other side. So he did release a statement about, you know, the two kind of universes and he said quote we are telling a big huge central story that is like marvel except for i think that we have a we're a lot more planned out than marvel from the beginning because we've gotten a group of writers together to work that story out completely so it's interesting that he releases this statement um after the reaction everybody had about Tony Stark, specifically Robert Downey Jr., coming back to play Doctor Doom. And it seems like with the multiverse, they're kind of, and we've discussed this so much on this show and also on TRB, how they use the multiverse to kind of do fan service and bring people back and kind of excuse away the deaths and impossibilities of everybody's fan favorites coming back mm -hmm. um, and appearing in future projects. Yep, well put. James yeah, James Gunn is saying, <laughs> no, forget that. <laughs> we're not going to just kind of do the, oh, they were dreaming stuff or, oh, they found a time machine stuff or, oh, this is a different version of that person. He's saying, we're making the story 
one central story from start to finish with the same writers. We're all on the same page. We're not going off into different sacred timelines and anchor beings and uh, Earth 77532 and all this other stuff. He's saying, no, there's one universe, one story, and we're in it from the beginning. And I love that. And we talked about this on the San Diego Comic-Con episode that we did where we specifically discussed how I strongly believe that James Gunn is doing this the best way he can, which is I'm not going to go against Marvel. I can't compete with that. You saw that what they did. They pummeled everybody at San Diego Comic-Con. I can't do that. Maybe eventually he can do that, but not right now. Mm -hmm. That being said, he has to make his own track. And the way he's going to do that is say, I'm not doing any of that. I'm focused on story. I'm focused on having people connect with my characters in a way that feels um, genuine, authentic, and not, hey, I'm just trying to have that big moment on social media, which Disney is all about. They're all about the big Easter eggs and moments. and, And it seems like James Gunn's like, forget all of that. Go back to Guardians of the Galaxy 1. Go back to the the first story I told with Marvel and imagine me also doing that over here, which is I'm telling the story with the the character everybody knows, Superman, and it's going to be focused on him. And it's such a good time right now because of, you know, the political unrest in our country. Uh, Everywhere, just the, not just the, here. The general malaise and the unease and worry about wars and all that stuff like this is the perfect time for Superman and the, the, the version of Superman he wants to tell is the, that unflinching goodness, you know, in, you know in me, world. I need that more than anything. Everything's always so gritty. People are dying. Everything's so, oh, everything sucks. And then you leave movies feeling not great. Even Marvel's gotten be- to that point. Right. And the, the, the whole beauty of Superman, I, I'm sure I've said this before is you see these horrible situations in life. And you're like, man, I wish we had a Superman who could swoop in and save save those people or something. Mm -hmm. And like, we're going to get that. And you know how James Gunn puts so much heart into his stories and how he makes sure the characters are connected, which is number one for me. Always. I'm very excited about this because this is just the beginning and it's the right time. So people may gravitate towards this and I hope they do for the, the, um, the feeling that they'll get coming out of it. Cause I think it will be inspiring even for young boys to be like, Oh, Superman, he's good. And it's cool to be good. You know, that's, that's important. And it's to okay to have dad. emotions too. Yeah. Yeah. And then we're going to get a new wonder woman. We're going to get a Supergirl. We're getting Batman. I, and like, we're just starting this, this like proper, like DC story. And I don't even want to call it a universe. It's a story. And it, I'm going to be able to like one day watch it all again. Like I'm, I'm excited. I know I'm overhyping it maybe, but I'm very excited. I trust James Gunn and this kid looks like a great Superman. And uh, Rachel Brosnahan looks great as Lois. So I'm just real high on this. Uh, so uh, yeah, I don't have much else, but I, I love that they wrapped and it's, it's, it's coming. And we know it's coming. And that's another beautiful feeling because some there's some movies that we know we're rooting for that haven't started filming yet and stuff. And it's just like Superman is in the can. They just got to put it all together. I feel like they just started. We were just talking about how they were filming. That's another beautiful part of it. I don't know how he did it, but he did it. Yeah, it's already done. Um, I can't wait to see what they they do with it. Um, I admittedly am not the biggest um, DC person. And I felt like it's because specifically... Uh, with the Zack Snyder stuff, I never engaged with that. It was too dark for me. I felt like it lost its charm of what was in the comic book. And I know that there's the darker side of things um, with like the Frank Millers and, mm-hmm. you know, those kind of stories that are are not, you know, Graphic hopeful. Yeah. yeah, not hopeful Superman saving a cat from a tree. Mm-hmm. But I... Those are the stories I want. I want more of the family-friendly stuff in general. And I'm not saying that the other stuff isn't great, too, because it is. Like, we're about to talk about Deadpool. That is far, farthest from family-friendly that you could be, probably. Um, yeah. 
And I I laughed every second of that movie and I enjoyed it and I want to watch it again and I can't wait to watch it again and I can't wait to own it in my house. Like, Me too. Yeah. I, I love Deadpool. I've loved it I, from the moment that it I, came out. It cruises at a nice pace and, and moves around enough where I feel like it has like top tier rewatchability. Oh, yeah. And you find something new every time you watch it because there's like so many things in the background. But that being said, even though I love those things and I will cheer for it and root for it and we're about to get into it, I still want the hopeful stuff. I still want the superhero that is genuinely good, that doesn't have a bad side, that doesn't isn't going to make the terrible decision that someone dies. And, uh, you know, it, it's fine. I understand why people like those stories and they want them and like, oh, it makes them more human. I don't want human. I want a superhero. I want <laughs> Superman. I'm, I want someone that's better than me. <laughs> I get you. I, I loved Man of Steel. I love Man of mm -hmm. Steel. I, I thought Henry Cavill was great as Clark, great as Superman. I thought Zack Snyder did a phenomenal job on that movie. Uh, mm -hmm. Jonathan Nolan wrote a great story. The music was great. I, I love it. Absolutely love it. I'm ready for this more traditional take on Superman, too. And great it's like colors. you can like you yeah. can like both things, guys. You don't have to choose a side like root root for this to be good. Root for things to be good before instead of predetermining you're not going to like it. Root for I it. think people are pretty excited. The you know, they announced online this the new Superman logo hat and shirt which I sent to you and then I had to go to a, a work meeting. By the time I got out, it was all sold out and I felt so bad, but like it's popular enough that people are buying the merch already. Yeah. And they didn't even talk about it at San Diego Comic-Con and the merch sold uh, yeah, out. Yeah, I hope they market the hell out of this thing. Yeah. Um, all right. Now getting back into what I was just talking about, which is Deadpool, which we're probably going to be talking about for a little bit, because as the weeks go on, we're going to get more information about this movie. It's probably going to keep breaking records. So, oh. um, kicking off our little Deadpool part of the show, um, Ryan Reynolds dance double Nick Pauly, which if you haven't seen Deadpool and Wolverine, I, I would say probably skip this part. Um, but you should also watch our review if you have. Um, yeah, so at the beginning of the movie, Nick Pauly, dance pool, dance to Bye 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 NSYNC, which is also, people have pointed out, in X2, yes. where they're in the car with Wolverine. <clears throat> and which Pyro, I think, puts it on. It's Pyro. Who's in this? Yeah, who puts it on, yeah. Um, so at the beginning, Deadpool dances like crazy, kills a bunch of people with uh, Wolverine's bones, and it's hilarious. <laughs> and it was so jarring for me as an intro to this movie. I was laughing in a way that, like, I didn't even know I could laugh like that because it was just, I was so caught off guard. I was like, mm -hmm. what is happening? It was like, between, <laughs> like, oh my gods, and laughing. Yeah. But uh, and I think I turned to John and was like, this was made for me. <laughs> Specifically. <laughs> <laughs> um anyway so his dance double nick Polly shared a bunch of stuff over the past week or so but he also shared a video of how he landed the gig through an audition um which i love stuff like this i love the behind the scenes of how things get made and how things are done and specifically how people get their 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 break like it's so exciting yeah. so this guy was visiting his parents house got a call from his agent and said i need you to learn the bye 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 dance right now and send me a video and he said he immediately started learning it and he said he couldn't he kept showing clips like the video clip is a um kind of just a bunch of clips together of him talking through the process outtakes of like a little yeah little outtakes little. him watching the video trying it out messing up doing all the stuff and then showing you the final of how he got the gig <clears throat> and good on him he had he looks like ryan reynolds in the sense of like they have a similar body shape he does look like him he resembles him so uh i'm i'm really happy for him and i know sean levy did retweet i don't know if it was his tweet or someone else's talking about him and said like he brought a whole new level of like heart to this movie and we couldn't have done it without him yeah. so they think very highly of this guy and he's i can only imagine he's going to see more success from here he's going to get more jobs now um yeah yeah, they said similar things about my abs, which was nice. But. Oh, my God. Going to keep that as the thread through the show that's today? It. No, that's it. That's it. <laughs> so a couple more Deadpool bits, as John calls them. So uh, it has set a record 
So Deadpool and Wolverine grossed over $550 million worldwide. It was the number one opening for a rated R movie and the sixth biggest opening. Um, what are your thoughts, John? And uh, did you have any thoughts on the dance, by the way? I didn't really ask you. I'm sorry. Um, no, I mean, I, you know, when when those songs were coming out, I was more on the other side of the aisle. I was like one of the corn kids and like the metal oh, like stuff. Instinct was my jam. Yeah. So it was like I I didn't like the boy bands and stuff, but it is like it has nostalgia to it and there is there is humor to like how silly it is but how serious it was taken at the time and seeing like because i in my head wasn't thinking dance doubles i was watching the movie i was like oh man ryan reynolds like really got it yeah dance because someone asked blake lively on at, on the red carpet of the premiere what she thought of ryan's dance moves or in sync and she sort of like answered it but not really yeah, and then this comes it. out that it was actually this dude. And it's like, it makes me think of like things like those unsung heroes. Like I, I'm joking about the, oh, I'm a double or whatever, but these yeah. real people who are doubles who do like stunt men. And we've talked about, they, they do need a stunt Oscar. Cause those guys, those men and women like Eunice Huthart, uh, uh, the stunt coordinator for the rise of Skywalker. She was uh, on James Bond. Yeah. James Bond, golden eye. We interviewed her on the resistance broadcast. And like, she is so good at what she does. And like mm -hmm. all these stunt people are so good at what they do, but they don't get the credit. It's like in mm -hmm. one of my favorite movies, The Prestige, ironically, which, you know, has a uh, Hugh Jackman. He has to take his bow beneath the stage while, you know, someone else is on top of the stage. And it's just like they have to eat that. But this guy, because of the way the world is today, he has a chance to be out there on social media and have an opportunity to uh, be known and accepted. And like you said, maybe get more work. Yeah, it oh, it made the movie. That was it was such a, a perfect way to open that film that I can't see it any other way. And I loved also they put out a clip of I think from Sean Levy of Nick Pauly doing the dance in the suit. And it was in front of like a bunch of blue screens in a parking lot. So it was just funny to see that because I was like, oh, so he wasn't in a snowy location. He was in a parking lot somewhere. Impressive. Um. Other things about Deadpool, they did release a reel um, from the TVA room, which was all practical and zero CGI, which is wild to me. I knew that like the people down below might have been in a room, but the whole entire room itself was practical. Um, what do you think of that, John? I'm a big fan of practical effects myself. I want to know your thoughts because you seem really enamored by this. So I want to hear your thoughts first. Yeah, I just feel like oftentimes with Marvel movies, especially they, everything's a blue screen. Like they showed, what was it? The Secret War show or Secret Invasion show with Nick Fury where he's at a desk and like the whole rest of the room is, is blue screen. And like what kind of experience is that for your cast and crew when they're they're just staring at blue? Like how do they interact with that? Whereas this scene, it's a whole office. They're up on a platform. There's screens everywhere. They're in the TVA. They're actually there. Yeah. Um, it just creates a different type of environment for your cast and crew to work in. And then overall better experience for your viewers because it actually exists. You also get better shots because they're able to like get different locations within the set. Whereas mm -hmm. if you're shooting on a screen, like the volume or uh, a green screen. It's like you saw how they shot Nick Polly. They're just shooting him one way. And yes, they're shooting around him, but like he's not in, he's not engaging with the set, touching right. things. Uh, you know, Deadpool falls on the guy and takes his mug and stuff. Like, like the guy's in his space. Yeah. Creates his own kind of area. Right. It's just, it's just different. Um, but they did release a reel. Um, and the gentleman that did build it, I believe his name was Randy, passed away in April. So their product oh, wow. production designer uh, passed away before the movie came out. So that was one of the reasons they released this saying like, hey, this happened. Um, we really appreciate everything that this person did for the movie and um, we miss him. And so wow. I could see them definitely putting in a uh, four-year consideration for the production design for this movie, for this gentleman that passed away. Sure. Um, oh, it's wow. it's heartbreaking when you hear stuff like that because it's, yeah, Randy, uh, 
sorry, not Randy. I got it wrong. I keep saying Randy. It's not Randy. It's Raymond Chan. Um, they put out a reel celebrating him and everything he did for the movie, which they said the majority of the sets were practical from the skull head that they jumped through the eye of the skull, uh, the TVA, um, the whole room where he gets, you know, dressed with the guy where he keeps slapping his butt and he calls him a predator like that exists. Oh um, yeah. Them outside with the 20th century Fox existed. That's um, crazy. Yeah. They, Sean Levy called Ray Chan their movie's anchor being. And he said he's gone too soon, but his work will be forever. Uh, that's a sweet s statement yeah. there. Um, yeah. So I really hope he does get at least nominated for mm -hmm. production. I think he should get it just because the sets in this movie were insane and they made the movie what it was like the street scene where they're fighting with the bus. Oh, yeah. Are you kidding? Um, so I hope they Crazy. get it. Yeah, I I also like this because I every once in a while I see one of those older interviews um, from like 10 or so years ago of like you and McGregor mm -hmm. talking about how like just challenging it was to film the prequels because he's standing in a room surrounded by green walls uh, looking up at a tennis ball on a rod. And oh he's supposed to, and he he's hated to, that. Yeah, he's supposed to like, you know, and he he's explaining how difficult it was. And I, I think beyond all the things you listed, which are all the great points about the production aspect of it. I think it's just more fun for the actors to mm -hmm. like to be in these environments, you know? Uh, so uh, that was cool to see. And yeah, I hope, I hope the guy does. I mean, he already has a legacy because this movie is just killing it. Uh, it is. But, yeah, the toys. Maybe some contention. Um, and keeping on with the thread of Deadpool, um, again, spoilers, we've already talked about plenty, but I'm just letting you know. Um, Channing Tatum, who played Gambit in the film, finally got to suit up yes. as Gambit, put up a lovely post this past week about 10 years apart to the day when he showed up at San Diego Comic-Con wearing his Gambit shirt and then showing up again for Deadpool, also wearing the same Gambit shirt, <laughs> um, which, by the way, they both have aged wonderfully. Good for them. Um, just thanking Ryan Reynolds for the opportunity saying, you know, Sean Levy also giving him the moment on screen. Um, and he just had so much fun in this whole experience. And it made me at least feel that I hope he gets to actually play this character again, because all I've heard people say is that his accent was hilarious and absolutely accurate. Yeah. <laughs> and that he killed it and that everybody wants more. And I hope that for him because he's similarly like we were talking about last week on TRB um, and how I got emotional when you and McGregor walked on stage at D23. Channing Tatum has been fighting for this role for 10 years. He's wanted to be Gambit. He keeps bringing it up. He probably worked his butt off to get that accent right. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he stole the scene when he was in it. Honestly, he stole every scene he was. I loved in. every minute of it. Oh my god, I I remember turning to you at one point and being like, "What is this accent?" And you were like, "It's it's awesome. It's perfect." <laughs> and I I just because at first it was like so jarring. I was like, "Is this supposed to be ridiculous?" But then what I've heard from people is like, "No, that is an accurate accent." Yeah, it's watch the in, the, in the animated series. It's pretty much the exact same. Yeah. So, um, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean. You know, he seems like the, a down to earth type of actor. Uh, anytime you see him in interviews, he seems just very like chill and and pretty normal. And I don't think he carries mu too much of an ego with him. And mm -hmm. I've something something about Channing Tatum. Like, I don't, I'm not, I don't think he's like necessarily like the greatest actor in the world. And I don't know that he's ever going to win an Oscar. But I'm thinking about all these things I've seen him in. Except I, I obviously I've not seen Magic Mike. I'm not very interested in that. I am. I have. He was very good in that. Yeah, I just, and I'm not just talking the dancing. I'm talking like actual acting. He was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not really that interested in those movies, but uh, even a movie. Have you ever seen the movie The Dilemma? <laughs> no, but I love him in She's All That or whatever it is with Amanda Bynes. He plays. A oh, she's the player. man. She's the man. Yes. Yeah. Not she's all that. She's yeah. The man. He's good in the, all these like bit like obviously Twenty One Jump Street. He's really funny in. Mm -hmm. uh, my name's Jeff. But <laughs> you said that really, I still don't know. <laughs> you watch the you have not have you seen that movie? No, you gotta watch 21 Jump Street. You will 
love it, Lacey. I'm telling you, you will love that movie. Um, <laughs> you always bring up that Jeff comment. <laughs> My name's Jeff. Patreon, so, we asked our patrons, like, what quotes do we say? And you didn't bring that up. Oh, I, I, here's the thing. They said, like, what one do you do a lot? And I said, I do that one all the time. Like, it's, it's, it, I started thinking about it. I'm like, it's crazy. Um, sometimes my wife tells me, Kathleen, she's like, you and your friends sometimes have full conversations in just movie quotes. I'm like, oh, it's a problem. <laughs> but <laughs> it's a, in the dilemma, he plays this guy who, like, Winona Ryder's having this affair with. And it's always the guy people are having an affair with. But, but his, He's so funny in this in that movie. If you haven't mm -hmm. seen it, and mm -hmm. he is a small part, it's just like he's just good. He's good. He says, he he says really no to no part. Like no part is too small for him. He'll do it. Think of and like he, the remember the end of the world one. Yes, this is the end. Yes. Yeah, he his comedic delivery and timing is very underrated. He's very good. He's mm -hmm. very good at, at comedies. I would if I was if I was making a comedy. I would try to write something that involves him because I think he's very funny. I liked um, him in the Sandra Bullock movie that came out recently where like they go to that island. Oh, where she's like he plays uh, basically a himbo. He plays like the dumb <laughs> kind of like <laughs> like she's an author and he's like somehow her romantic interest, but yeah. like he's kind of an idiot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sandra Bullock still like doing these movies with all these younger dudes and she's still just getting it getting after it good for her she looks great she does yeah mm -hmm. i i saw miss congeniality on a date in the theaters can you believe that yeah because she's that's one of her best movies of all time it's a really good movie I have that's to one say. of my favorite movies the sequel's garbage but the first one was no good. the first original one is one of my favorite yeah. movies ever um yeah it's good um channing tatum uh i'm rooting for him too i would love to see that if, if it was only the one and done at least he got to fulfill that it was an awesome scene very cool um and then i know this next story has another actor who i root for often too yes yeah, so keeping up with comic book like we said this is going to be a comic book heavy episode <laughs> uh punisher actor john bernthal trained with thomas kane who played punisher in the 2004 film in preparation for daredevil born again so daredevil born again surprisingly was not brought up at the m the marvel mcu panel uh, at san diego comic-con which i think they're going to be saving it for d23 because john bernthal and charlie cox were at a comic-con that weekend mm -hmm. so they were not even in the area of uh san diego comic-con um it's interesting that he trained with another punisher i have i've seen thomas kane sorry, oh my god thomas kane thomas jane as punisher because matt really likes punisher and that's the one where like his whole family dies it's like really really terrible yeah not that the Bernthal one isn't, but like I feel like the Thomas Jane one is like even more over the top crazy. Um, it's, but I've uh, seen the Bernthal yeah. one. I feel like Bernthal is more intimate. It's more like you can't hide from it. How terrible! It's more. It's more are. serious. Yeah. Yes. More cerebral. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but he's very good. I just remember the scene where he's throwing guys in concrete. I remember that scene. <laughs> he's. He's a, yeah, he's an intense actor and he's really he's he's really good for Frank Castle because he's got the accent, he's mm -hmm. got the look. Uh there there's a like there's a like a worn out nature to him. It's just uh it's he's like I was really impressed cuz I did see the 2004 Punisher with Thomas Jane in the theaters and I was always been a big Punisher fan. Um and I I remember liking it back then because mm -hmm. i wanted it to like it i mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. it's a little too campy and the music's not good and you know john travolta was kind of a crappy villain and I, so anyway and then they did the 2008 one with ray stevenson rest in peace it was just basically blood fest it was like honestly some scenes in that movie like you're like that's like deadpool blood like it's just like Deadpool. Blood. Some of those scenes were ridiculous. Like yeah, the whole scene at the beginning. It's oh, nuts. Yeah. So yeah, that Punisher uh, War Zone is just bananas. So, like nuts how violent it was. So then mm -hmm. it's like oh, and it didn't make a lot of money. So like they went 0 for two with Punisher. 
and I'm like, oh man. And then like we're doing Punisher on TV with John Bernthal. I'm like, oh man. And then I watch it. I'm like, son of a gun. He's my Punisher now. Mm-hmm. So I and I'm not the biggest Daredevil fan. I gotta I gotta watch all of it really i i watched like the the old movie with ben affleck or whatever but i gotta watch this because yeah. i want more punisher and this is if this is the avenue then then so charlie's be it, great then yeah. it got a little crazy with the defenders and then he's also in the most recent uh, the lady hulk one what is it called oh my god he she was hulk? in that she hulk she was in he was in that one too so it's like there's so many different kind of threads mm-hmm. you have to keep up with to get to where they are now um yeah. but i'm just pumped i hope they bring jessica jones back because she was my favorite oh she kathleen was, loved that show oh my god jessica jones was so good yeah. i have a i have a poster from jessica jones they uh premiered it at uh comic-con paris when i worked for read pop and one of my coworkers brought it home and it has Kristen's and Carrie Ann Moss's signature on it. And it's a poster that they did for that show. And I had forgotten I even had it. And I was wow. going through my like stuff and I was like, what is this, Jessica Jones? And then I saw the signatures on it. And I was like, oh my God. Nice. Uh, so I was like super pumped. Are you I also do? have a frame it. Probably. I also have a poster from uh, years ago. It's a huge like movie size poster and it has chris hemsworth's signature on it and it's thor the original thor the first oh one. wow yeah very cool i find these signature posters from time to time and i didn't even know i had them look at that what an what an inventory over at the uh, <laughs> you have no yeah, idea over at the gilly household uh but i really hope they bring back jessica jones i want luke cage and jessica jones we didn't really get that romance yet i i want it <laughs> <laughs> why are you laughing because I feel like you're always looking for the romance. I'm not. That's an actual romance. They have sure. children. In the, in the they comics, do in the comics. Yes. Oh well, I then stand. I stand corrected. Um, but which they started in Jessica Jones, and then he. So goes that's into- oh, because you said I hope Luke Cage is in Jessica Jones, and I thought you meant in the show. I get you. Okay. Yes, I do mean in the show. Like oh. he's in the show with her. Oh. Okay. Are you going back to the Miss Rachel thing? Put it in. Put no. It in. <laughs> All right. Yes, I was. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to go back to wholesome for a second because we will kind of uh, we're going to talk about Superman, who is wholesome. But this story is not wholesome. So I shouldn't have said that. Um, All right. <laughs> Run that back. Uh, Josh Hartnett, who is wonderful. It has a movie coming out, Trap, which I'm so excited to see. It's I want to see that too. It yeah. looks so good. Yeah. Um, he's starting to do press for the film, and everyone's really excited. And like John has said numerous times, don't go up to celebrities like this and say, "Where have you been? What a re- a renaissance for you!" Like, oh. stop, stop doing that. Just like you should stop asking Harrison Ford your nerdy questions. It's just so annoying. <laughs> or handing him like small mics. That's I think my biggest pet peeve. Is like you hand a a A list master of their craft a little tiny microphone and you're like just like make the tiktok like don't don't do that it's rude it's disrespectful stop doing it you're not leaving a good response what would you what people. would you ask harrison ford if he's coming down the press line and you're you have you get one question what are you asking harrison ford uh probably something along the lines of what's a lesson in acting that you wish you had known earlier in your career or mm. uh what's a role you had wish you had gotten that you didn't end up getting that's a good question yeah i could tell you right now it's not okay so like you are in a universe with <laughs> red hulk and like so if you had to fight another hulk what hulk would it be like I'm not asking him those questions. I could tell you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I remember him telling some. If you know were Indiana Red Jones Hulk. and hated snakes, like what other characters do you think hate snakes? I think he was asked that. I know he was. Oh, yeah. Because I guess his character is a part of the serpent society. I forget. My anyway. whole thing is it's it's like <clears throat> the Hydra thing. I, I, look, just respect people's time. 
I, it's nothing is more insulting than when you see these people ask legends, iconic pop culture people these questions or like sexually harass them in public. That's the other thing. Like poor Pedro Pascal who got harassed for like six months straight. Like everybody was just like not respecting him. I digress. Yeah. Well, anyway. yeah, well I'll, 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 I'll say one thing on that. It seems that it's okay to completely objectify men. Um, whereas they're doing it with Glenn Powell right now. But I feel bad for him. We've evolved to the point where we're not doing it to women. People still still do it to women, but professional interviewers aren't really doing it to women the way they used to. Uh, we've evolved from that. But men, for some reason, are still open game, and it's uh, like like we have a lot of insecurities too. You know, like. Let's let's chill out, it, especially with someone like Pedro Pascal. Seems like a very actually private, sensitive person. It people are operating around what is the twenty second soundbite that I can put on Instagram that will either get rage bait or people to share, and those are the two options. There's no in between. All I know is that there are tons of talented journalists. Uh, interviewers, filmmakers, up and coming people that want to, you know, get into the, uh, get the access. And you have these people that are just taking up a space to ask these dumb, dumb questions. And nothing makes me happier than Harrison Ford being like, no, I'm not answering your stupid question. Like, thank you for saying that. I wish more celebs would say that. And that is the end of my rant. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm now going to move on to this story. Did you know what you know? His uh, response, his his continually continually used response is also. He goes, um, "Thank you for the opportunity to answer this." <laughs> he said that a few times. The bad questions. He's like, "See, but I now, so like they did with Pedro, where they were objectifying nonstop. They've now made it." How can I embarrass Harrison Ford? Like, how can I get that moment where he's so annoyed that he gives me the soundbite that he won't yeah. answer it? I feel yeah. like that's where they're going with it. And it's just rude. Like, don't do that. Don't waste this guy's time. If you don't have a question, go to the next person. Yeah. Um, anyway, Josh yeah. Hartnett. Love him. He's great. Excited for his new movie coming out. He's going to kill it. Uh, literally, he's killing people. Um, <laughs> Josh Hartnett turned down the role of Superman twice and left Hollywood for a while after becoming the target of stalkers. So he said, quote, a guy showed up at one of my premieres with a gun claiming to be my father. He ended up in prison. There were lots of things. Now there's a space there. He paused. There were a lot of things. It was a weird time and I wasn't going to be grist for the mill. What a statement is that? Uh, I, don't blame him. We live in a crazy, crazy world. And if anything that's changed over the years outside of access with social media is the ability for people to form very deep, serious parasocial relationships with celebrities, mm -hmm. content creators, just people online. People assume because they follow other people, watch their videos, watched all their movies, that they know them at a level that this other person doesn't. Yep. Um, and honestly, reading something like this is terrifying. Whether it's a woman or a man or whoever, it's terrifying. And it's I couldn't imagine being in his shoes. Um, and I applaud him for doing what he wanted to do with his life and taking a situation like that serious and standing up for himself, regardless of what the outcome of his career was going to be. He was saying, I'm not going to do this. I'm out. And good for him. And I, once again, wish him all the success. I can't wait to see his movie. I hope it's really good. Um, what are your thoughts, John? Yeah, Josh Hartnett, another guy easy to root for. You know, he's a family man. He moved his family away from L.A. for the betterment of them uh, to the detriment of his career, which he was fine with. Um, you know, turning down Superman, which I believe was Superman Returns, which eventually went to Brandon Routh. Not that great of a movie anyway. Um, but he like when I watch interviews with Josh Hartnett, he is a very intelligent person and he speaks 
he like he seems like he has a lot of existentialism in the way he speaks about you know what's important to him and understanding that you know we don't have a lot of time and he wants to spend a lot of time with his family and stuff he doesn't want to necessarily be a celebrity but he loves doing what he does mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. i do like seeing that he was able to get past a lot of that stuff that was going on with him in his early 20s um because i mean he was a young dude when he burst onto the scene like in 1998 with the faculty and halloween h2o and mm -hmm. you know he was playing jamie lee curtis's kid you know um and now he's in his mid 40s and he's reestablishing himself on his terms you know he he made the choices for his career and it's cool to see that he feels comfortable to be back at it maybe his kids are old enough i don't know i don't really dig into i, I don't dig into like celebrities kids and stuff i think that's strange um but yeah i also am also excited for this movie uh, and i'm i'm going to root for josh hartnett cuz he seems like you know one of the good ones and it seems like that's been a theme on this episode you know john bernthal and you know channing tatum and there there are some of these actors in these spaces that uh, really do seem like generally good people in an industry that is often uh, found to be not as not to get into it. But we recently heard about the San Diego Comic-Con sex trafficking arrests. And oh, my gosh, a 16 year old. Uh, it's just it's just uh, oh, it's absolutely horrifying and awful. And uh, so and I know Hollywood like is rife with the, like problems like this. Predators. Uh, yes. Yeah. Predators, pedophiles yeah. and uh, from executives down to actors and, you know, then you see like a family guy like Josh Hartnett, who's getting back in the mix on his terms. And you, you got a root for that. And and my Shyamalan, too, you know, he gets a lot of crap from people about his style of movies and stuff like that. But, you know, if you make He's one doing his own movie, thing, if yeah. you make one great movie, you're a legend. And he makes The Sixth Sense, which blew everybody away. Mm -hmm. I had it spoiled for me, so I didn't like it as much. But Sign, uh, I think, is an incredible movie. Yeah. Um, so I love Signs. I'm rooting for him too. He seems like a good guy too. And they seem to really get along in some of the uh, promo stuff they're doing with this that you sent me about the, the water bowls and whatever. The water but, bowl. Yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. clearly Josh was, was fed answers. Yeah. Oh yeah. Who was my junior prom date? And he like knew the answer. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, anything else? No, I think it's time to get into some trailers. All right. Oh God. I love that movie. Okay, it is trailer time. We got two this week. Uh, the first big one is, uh, well, the news about it is that this show is going to fit right up into the upcoming The Batman 2, and that is The Penguin with Colin Farrell. Uh, premieres September 19th on Max. Uh, and again, um, The Batman 2, I believe, starts filming next year for a 2026 release. Yes, So this show October. is sort of like, yeah, keeping people in the mix because uh, i believe it was also reported that pattinson's batman is going to make an appearance in this show i assume at the very yes. end to mm -hmm. like carry it in so i know you're not do you like you like did you like the batman i, I loved the batman i thought oh, it was you great the batman but you're not it was a vibing. unique take i didn't okay. like the joker i remember being like i don't need this i don't need the joker in this at the end that the, yeah yeah um yeah i i get it because and it was right when the joker came out with joaquin phoenix too so i was like how many jokers are we getting and you had yeah. jared leto it was like a lot a lot of jokers that's true that's yeah. true um but you don't have much on this right you're not big into this show right i am probably not going to watch this show but i will see the next batman okay i <clears throat> i will watch this show for our listeners who are um going to follow this so i may you know Follow, you know follow me along uh, on that but i like the trailer um it it felt like you know sometimes we talk about tv shows that are affiliated with movies whether it's star wars or other things even marvel that just did de not there you can tell something's off this looks like it's right in the same feel and aesthetic as the batman so you'll be able to nice smoothly go from ba the batman to this to the batman 2 um so I thought Colin Farrell uh, sounded good, though he looked good. And it actually surprised me because I was the same way as you. Like when the Penguin was announced, I was like, what are they doing? Why are they doing this? This is not going to be part of the new DC canon. Mm -hmm. It just seems like a cash grab or something. But then I watched this trailer and heard that this is going to affect things that happened in the Batman 2. 
it has a, a higher level of importance than I thought it had. And I was more interested in the story because they brought in the Falcones. Kristen Meliotti is uh, playing Falcone's daughter. I like her. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, I'm, I, I am going to watch this. And I'm not saying I'm going to fall in love with it, but I'm going to give it a shot. Um, <laughs> and then, Lacey, we have... Uh, this one sort of came out of nowhere for me. I I, I hadn't. I've actually, never heard of this. I had never heard of this, which is not good. But <laughs> uh, hopefully, this trailer and us talking about it and uh, other people talking about it helps. But greedy people with Joseph Joseph Gordon Levitt and Himesh Patel. Uh, Himesh Patel, uh, from, you know, from Tenant. Uh, he was the lead in Yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, this comes out August 23rd. It is a bit of a bad cops, but in a humorous way, uh, uh situation. Um, are you a JGL fan? And what'd you think of, uh, of this trailer? I thought the trailer was interesting. The concept is funny. You know, you have a cop that gets caught up in this terrible situation that then like tries to benefit from it. Um, Joseph, Joseph Gordon Levitt, people love him. I think he'll be fine. He seemed really funny in it. His whole like beard haircut that he has going with the sideburns is pretty hilarious. He's I was doing surprised his best to look like a grown man. Yeah. I was surprised Lily James is in this too because Hamish and Lily James are both in yesterday. Mm-hmm. And then I don't know if you remember this. Someone sued yesterday because Lily James isn't in it that much. And they said, you lied to me because in the trailer you made it seem like she was in it more and they won. Really? I believe they won. What? Case that like the studio should have put her in more. That it was like false advertising. Wow. Hmm. Um, but it's just fun funny seeing them in the same movie again together. Uh I probably would watch this on streaming. I wouldn't go to the theater to see it. Hmm. Um it's one of those things that like if it rolled up on uh Netflix or Prime or something, it was Amazon, free to watch. Yeah. Yeah, it was free to watch. I'd be like, eh, why not? Um, am I dying to see it? No. Is it on my list of things that like, oh, man, these are the movies of the year? No. It looks like it would be a fun watch, but I feel like at the same time, they're not doing a good job marketing it because I've never heard of this movie before. It, I'm, I'm just trying to dig into it a little bit because I'm like, like you, I'm like, this came out of nowhere. And like when I was, I was searching for trailers for us to talk about, to be honest. Yeah, and so the production of this it was originally called by the way did you hear ryan reynolds say deadpool was originally called deadpool and friend wolverine yes i hate that deadpool and friend and they somebody saw they they tested in front of somebody or somebody saw it and they're like we have to change this before the super bowl ad and Disney was like, no, we're not going to change it. And Ryan Reynolds was like, we had to tell them you are changing this. Like we had to push Disney to, to, to please change it to Deadpool and Wolverine. So he was that that's a serious thing. But anyway, which is funny this- because that's what marketed it more than anything else, because it's straightforward. It's Deadpool and Wolverine. <laughs> but my point, it's the creator going against Disney. And it's like, I'm telling they you, got to listen to these people more. These studios, you heard it from George Lucas a long time ago. These studios do not know what they're doing. <laughs> they're not creative people. As <laughs> they're he said. not. Yeah. They're business people. And they think so, that they know better than everybody else. So this one, the film was initially called The Problem with Providence. Uh, and in May 22, it was announced that filming started with Lily James, uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Himesh Patel. Um, and it just like got bogged down in like ownership rights and uh like all these different people joined the cast a uh, month mm. like a, a few weeks after shooting and if a filming happened in north carolina in, in two years ago and it's not like this is a avengers movie Mm-mm. so this thing's been sitting around and, and and not until this past october uh was it retitled and then in february lionsgate um acquired the domestic rights for it so i like the problem with providence better than greedy people I know. I wonder if it's like. It's more catchy. Do- yeah, I don't know. I mean, the alliteration, I guess, but maybe they want something more direct so you understand what it's about. Because why didn't anyone want this? Why did like it take so long for a studio like Lionsgate to pick it up? It's like, that has me wondering. Um, but I'm with you. I'm not going to go see this in theaters. No it seems offense. like they're burying it in August. 
Yeah, I yeah, the back to school time is a little strange. Mm -hmm. uh, I will see this on Netflix or wherever it comes out, and I hope it's good. But not 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 enough for the theaters for me. I'm with you. Mm -hmm. um, but that's it. So now let's get to our final segment uh, to find out what we're watching. We can never leave the house, and we just probably sit around all weekend and watch TV. Go on. So, Lacey, what are you watching? Did you finish all the shows that you were hoping to finish? Did you start the things that you were hoping to start? <laughs> I have continued on with the shows that I brought up last week. So I finished uh, Homicide Los Angeles, which was great. I hope they do another season. They've done New York and L.A. I'm wondering what city they're going to do next. Maybe Chicago or some other big city. Um, I watched the next batch because Netflix does them in batches now of Too Hot to Handle. So we're up to like basically the finale, which was really great. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't remember if it was on here. I think it was on TRB, but I've been watching a lot of Bluey lately, which is from uh, my daughter loving it. She's now mm -hmm. gotten into the, the Bluey camp. Uh, and it is a surprisingly really good kids show. Yeah, my kids I, love it. I enjoy it. Have you watched it? Not enough to pay attention. So, first of all, it's Australian, so they have Australian accents. Right. But <laughs> right. Uh, so it's a family of dogs, and the gist, the thing that makes it so special and so interesting, is that unlike other kids shows where you have a story that's being told or the person that is in the story talking to the camera like a Deadpool breaking the fourth wall, whether mm -hmm. it be Blue's Clues, Gabby's Dollhouse. I'm saying those two actually came from the same production company, but they talk to the camera and they say, what do you think? Or like a Sesame Street. Blue Bluey is different. It doesn't acknowledge you as the viewer. It is the family playing together and acting out scenarios so it's like today's episode is restaurant and the family is pretending they're having a restaurant in their house and it's so heartwarming because it's these moments of this family together and it reminds you of your own family playing together mm -hmm. and like that's cool uh encourages how parents like it's okay to be silly and have fun with your kids and act ridiculous and pretend that you're driving a car at your dining room table and like all these other things like it's really really cute and then also blended in there are messages that would go over a kid's head so you have like moments That's where so the cool. yeah so like you have moments where the parents remember something of themselves when they're younger like a story that they've learned a lesson or you have you know, typical little kids being like, but why is this this way, dad? And like, he knows the answer, but he doesn't give her the real answer because she's a child and she's not going to understand. But he'll, but the storyteller is letting you know that you know what the story is, like how yeah. he his wife or why the sister hasn't talked to the other sister in a long time or what happened uh, when the dad was mean to his brother back in the day or the the episode i watched today was the kids go in the car to the dump and they're playing in the car with the dad and he's talking about how he's best dad ever whatever they get to the dump he goes to throw out some stuff and in the box is a bunch of drawings that bluey had made and she was like how could you throw out my drawings why would you do this to me and she's like you're not the best dad ever and there's this moment of like guilt as a parent that you're like oh my god like and then he explains to her that I'm not throwing them in the trash. I'm throwing them in a bin that the paper then becomes more paper for other kids to make paintings and drawings. And then the kids are like, hooray, we'd love to do that. And then <laughs> it's stories like that where you're explaining how things operate. Yeah. And I have to tell you, in the past week, my daughter has been pretending more than ever before, like talking to herself with her toys, pretending, doing all these things. It's like a really, really adorable show. And I said it earlier, I think off air, but it I am tempted now to just put it on myself because it's like so cute. Oh, <laughs> it's wow. so fun. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to actually pay attention. But both my kids like it, and that's rare. Wow. For both It'll get you. Attention. Oh my God. There was an episode. Oh my God. There was an episode of the grandfather 
with the kids and they're running away from the mom and the mom is um her name's chili she's hiding she's like i know you're in there i know you're hiding from me whatever and she's talking to like this other dog dad that's like oh bob's not here uh and she's like i need him i need my dad i need him sometimes oh and it's like this moment of like the older daughter with the dad of like he's now not going to be here all the time Mm -hmm. and he still needs him even when she's older oh my god i almost i start almost started crying I almost started crying watching Blue with my daughter the other day. (laughs) It was so intense. And I went online and it's like, I'm not the only one. Like parents talk about how like over the top emotional this show can be. And also there's a lot of TikToks about moms talking about how they're attracted to the dad dog. Okay. Then see, now we have to move on. I'm just, it's like five minutes, five minutes, a five minute like positive rant. Ends with some odd. Listen, I'm not saying I'm that person. I'm just saying that there are TikToks that exist, which is funny to me because people always take it to that. Put it in, put it in, put it in. Arf, arf. (laughs) Anyway, but I suggest you watch it. Next time your kids are watching it, give it a couple episodes, watch it because it's really, really cute. And the way they do it is that they know parents are watching with their kids. So it's not just for them. Yeah, I will. I'll check it out. Everyone's like, um, shut up. <laughs> uh, no, no. No, I'm um, saying everyone listening is like, we get it. <laughs> you, you work for Bluey. We get it. No. Uh, I finished The Bear season three. Um, mixed feelings like about it? it. Mixed feelings. I, I've noticed that proof of how good this show is is that I don't give two shits about their cooking talk (laughs) i don't care all the all the food they make all those any fancy dish at a restaurant is complete crap to me everyone was talking about that omelet with potato chips on it what (laughs) that one of the characters makes she makes like an omelet with potato chips on it oh they make a ton of things something I but, don't know. I guess it was like a, a viral omelet that from that show that everybody was making. But it, my point is, it's like it's always like this little tiny piece of something with like a little piece of parsley and like two globs of something. And I'm like, a perfect who's, bite. Who's eating this? I'm not eating this. <laughs> so <laughs> be, like the, that part of the show is so uninteresting to me. And some of the scenes, I feel like I'm like looking at Kathleen. I'm like, this is like we're just sitting here. <laughs> watching people talk about stuff we don't give a crap about i'm like what is going on but then there are the moments where that you really dig into the characters and stuff so i don't think this was a very strong season i think it was the worst season but Mm -hmm. it did leave me curious as to where they're going to go next um Mm -hmm. so i'm still going to keep watching i just didn't really love this season didn't grab me for some reason um and i'm still checking in with wrestling once in a while um I like there's this uh, female wrestler, Liv Morgan, who's like this new villain. I think she's like really good. And then this guy, Braun Breaker, who's actually the son of Rick Steiner, the, of the famous Steiner brothers. And he's like the like really good on the mic and he's really good at re- like in the ring. And I'm like, all right, they're actually getting young talent. And like, it's not the same old. They're not like dragging the Undertaker out there every night and stuff. So <laughs> I, I hope wrestling's going into a, a new direction because they're doing a lot more of the soap opera stuff too, Lacey, like that, that, you know, behind the scenes, the, the story stuff, um, which I like. Um, and I, I do still have to start house of the dragon. I haven't started that yet, but nice. I just, uh, every time you bring up WWE, I just have flashbacks of when I worked there. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. It was just nuts. Yeah. yeah. Specifically, like, I always think about Kelly Kelly's theme song because it was so, like, annoying. Isn't it like, I oh, know you want me? No, it's, hello, hello, hello. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, the guy, so bad, but. and the guy that makes those themes works at the office in Stanford, Connecticut, and drives a Porsche. And he has a parking spot that's right next to his music studio. And there's no parking spots where his parking spot is, but because he is who he is, he gets to park right next to the building so that he can get out of his car and just go right into the music. Jim studio. Johnston. Yeah. I mean, that dude's done all the themes. I don't know how old he he's is. He's but... loaded. 
Yeah, he <laughs> he's did like so rich. I'm talking about he was doing the themes in the 80s, like the Ultimate Warrior. Yeah, but he did. He did. The Park <laughs> Foundation. Yeah. Well, now, now the new thing with wrestling themes, Lacey, is every star needs to have a hook that the crowd like can't yes. help. Yes, and the first in. few sounds like they know like when john cena would come out that was one of my my favorite moments when working at wwe no i mean sing along oh i'm saying no. wwe when i worked there it was you would know in the first three notes oh yeah song it was yeah so like when i was in the stadiums and john cena would come out he'd have those like mm -hmm. and like the whole stadium would shake and people would lose it mm -hmm. for him yeah and he but is the now, nicest guy, if people are wondering. He is super, super nice. Oh, most wishes granted ever, right? Oh, he's um, absolutely wonderful. Mm -hmm. He's a, a wonderful human being. Um, but now in the choruses and stuff, they put a lot of woes and stuff for the crowd to sing because the crowds these days aren't as juiced as they used to be. I'll say that. They're all on their phones. Back in my day in the Attitude Era, we all had a piece of oak tag with something stupid written on it. We had our Austin 316 shirts. And those crowds were Go watch an old Raw or clip from it. Absolutely insane. The crowd. Yeah, they block out a lot of the, the crowds now because they're not getting the huge crowds they used to get. So they block out the chairs with like drapes and stuff. And people are quiet like a little bit. But anyway, uh, that brings us to the end of the show. So a nice mm -hmm. meaty, nerdy and nice for you uh, because we are taking the next week off because... Lacey's family is going on vacation and me and my family are going on vacation and we just not at the, same place. at the same place. No, we have to take <laughs> it at the same time though, which worked out. Uh, I would say close, but not close enough. Yeah. Yeah. True. Um, so next week, no nerdy nights, but we'll be back the following week. Um, and then TRB will be back this, am I going crazy this Thursday? uh for the recap of d23 for all the star wars fans out there uh but we just want to thank everybody for checking out the no. show like we said at the top no no yes this is gonna no? come out on monday oh this is coming out on monday so like yeah, so we're doing one week thursday with nerdy and nice no yeah. live show and then the following week is no nerdy and nice right. but a live show Yes. So we're actually yeah. not taking a week off. You're still yeah. getting something from us. <laughs> yeah, true. Here. True. Today is yeah. August 5th. Um, so technically we're already on vacation. And we're at the beach and we're giving you some nerdiness. Yeah. And then um August 15th is the return of TRB, where we'll give our uh reactions to D23 and all that. Mm -hmm. But we just want to thank everybody for checking this show out. Um it, we really appreciate it. We know um our diehard Star Wars listeners may not necessarily love everything else out there. Uh, but for those of you who have, thank you. Please tell your friends, spread the word. And for people who just found nerdy and nice, uh thank you for checking it out. We hope you enjoy the show. Let us know what you think because we are going to start doing more interactive stuff on the show involving you uh once we get back from vacation and now that we're after the acolyte and all that stuff. So we appreciate it. Um, special shout out to our movie star generals and silver screen spice runners on Patreon. Uh, go to patreon.com slash TRB podcast. You can support us for $5 a month. That's the first tier. And as you rise up in the ranks, there's a lot more uh, bonus material, Discord server, live chats, Q&As, a lot of good stuff there. And we appreciate all the support. Um, so Carmelo, John Reese, Jetta Rosewater, Frank Grande, Nick Kratz, Chris Morales, Brian Smith, Danny, Mike Ramori, Brennan McLaughlin, Sneaky Zebra, Dave Hornack, Jolton Jedi DiMaggio, Colin Cormier, and Steve Garrow, and the Spice Runner, David Probus, Neil Shaw, Kendall Gellner, Andrew Staley, Jeremy Myers, and the Fort Worthy. And however you support us, TRB, Nerdy and Nice, thank you all so much. Johnny Hoey for me on X and uh, my movie pod, Just Like the Movies. And Lacey, how about you? People can find me on social media at Lacey Gillerin and on TikTok at It's Lacey Gillerin. And of course, on the resistance broadcast on Wednesdays or Thursdays. We switch off from time to time, but mostly Thursdays uh, and Fridays on audio. Yeah. And then uh, we'll be doing Wednesdays uh, for TRB when Skeleton Crew comes out. December 3rd. Yeah, December. Christmas. Yes. So everybody um, support Superman and let's make DC uh, a, a fun, wonderful story for James Gunn and all of us. Uh, but from us here at Nerdy and Nice, uh, we will see you next time. So until then, see you around, kids. Uh -huh.